My name is Dr. Natasha Wiggins. I'm a palliative medicine um, registrar and I'm going to talk to you about the Liverpool Care Pathway. So, where does it come from? Well, the Liverpool Care Pathway is based on the hospice model of care. It enables other environments, such as hospitals and nursing homes, to be able to, to provide a high quality end of life care. It's not just uh, restricted to hospitals and nursing homes. The Liverpool Care Pathway can also be started in the community, which means that people can have good quality end of life care in their own homes. So, what is it? Essentially, it's just a guideline. It's a guideline for providing excellent care in the last few days of life. It allows all allied health professionals, that's physios, nurses, doctors, it allows everybody to focus on the comfort and the dignity of the person that is dying. It's not a treatment. It does not replace clinical judgment. So who decides when to start a Liverpool Care Pathway? Well, it's often actually really difficult to tell when somebody is in the last few days of life, particularly if they've been ill for a long time. The decision to use the LCT should be made by the most senior doctor available. This decision, however, is aided by the multidisciplinary team. It is usually uh, involving a palliative care or a Macmillan care nurse. The guidelines essentially focus on symptom control. In particular, the four common symptoms of dying. These are shortness of breath, pain, agitation, and respiratory secretion. And it also involves the prescription of what we call anticipatory medications. These are specific medications tailored to those four symptoms, and they're prescribed in anticipation of the patient needing them. The nurses can give them as required. They're usually prescribed subcutaneously. The majority of the usual medications are stopped. Um, this, for example, is statin. Why do we do this? Why do we stop the usual medications? Well, they fail to prolong life. For example, a statin is to reduce cholesterol and to prolong life, reduce comorbidity. But the patient's already dying. Often at this point also, patients are unable to swallow tablets. However, if the usual medications contribute to symptom relief, then these are appropriate to continue. An example of that may be a steroid which is reducing inflammation and pain. So what about eating and drinking? Well, contrary to many reported misconceptions, patients that are on the Liverpool Care Pathway can eat and drink whatever they desire, if they are able to. Often, however, they are unable to, or they don't want to. It's important to remember that decreased oral intake is actually a symptom of dying. So what else is involved in this pathway? Well, the medical team are prompted to consider whether certain interventions should continue. They're also prompted to think about the patient's spiritual needs and, or as importantly, the spiritual needs of the family. So, although not always, the following interventions are usually stopped. Blood tests, intravenous fluids, and regular observations. For example, blood pressure, temperature. The point of the procedures, such as blood tests and observations, is to detect when a patient is deteriorating and to react promptly. However, we know our patient is going to deteriorate. Consequently, doing those blood tests, taking that blood pressure every hour, it's unnecessary, it's invasive, and it's uncomfortable for the patient. This is in the majority of the time. So what about IV fluids? Well, people are often unsure why intravenous hydration is usually stopped. And actually, evidence demonstrates that when somebody is dying, they no longer require hydration. Fluids can actually end up in the pulmonary circulation. This causes distressing symptoms. Remember, decreased oral intake, decreased fluid requirement is a symptom of dying. So where does the family fit into all this? Well 
the decision and more importantly the responsibility to start the Liverpool care pathway actually lies within the medical team. However, carers and families should always be included in this decision making process. Finally, the LCP does not hasten death, it does not delay death, it ensures the patient gets the best possible care. If the patient is still alive on day seven of the care pathway, the medical team are prompted to ask themselves, have they made the right decision here? Should the patient remain on this pathway? The Liverpool care pathway is not a one-way journey. It can be stopped at any time. So to summarize, the Liverpool care pathway is a guideline to enable dying patients to receive the best possible care at the end of life, to ensure that they die comfortably and with dignity. Carers and families are involved in the decision, which ultimately lies with the most senior doctor. If the circumstances change, the Liverpool Care Pathway can be stopped. Thank you very much for listening to this episode. Bye now.